Welcome out to another episode of It's All My Trek Before Holiday Edition. This is, that's not the name of the episode. The episode's Galaxy's Child on It's All My Trek Before. Hey, Leia Brahms in this episode. She was a pioneer. You can be a pioneer. A couple of different ways. Patreon.com slash IBD. Be a pioneer. Support the network. I don't think that's one of the tiers, but if you get in a tier, you're a pioneer right away. Also, hey, follow us on Facebook. It's all been Trek Before. That's, that's it's that simple. That's where we are. Search for that. It's all been Trek Before. You'll be a pioneer. Talk us up. Tell us what you think about the episodes. Tell us what you think about us. Be kind. Be constructive. Please. Anyway, if you're not, I don't know why you're even listening to me right now. But you are going to listen to me right now. Galaxy's Child on Installment Trek Before. Welcome out to another episode of Top and Trek Before. We are back. Not just holographic versions of us, but the real versions of us. Hmm. This is Steven. Keith, ready to rate this number one. Jimmy Jerome, I will fight you to the death. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go first on first impressions this week because I talked it up like, oh, Liam Robbins is back. I remember really liking this episode as a child thinking, oh, this is fun because I love Leah Brahms and the, oh, she saw herself. How funny in the holodeck. I did not enjoy this. I cringed a whole bunch and this solidified for me. I really don't like the character of Jordy LaForge, at least not yet. I think Oof. there are other things I like about him later and I love LeVar Burton. So this is not a knock on the actor, but the character of Jordy LaForge has not done much for me in this series yet. And this episode was a really bad episode for him. I, I both agree and disagree in the sense that I think that there were some poorly written sequences for him yeah. that if they had, and this is me jumping the gun, <laughs> jumping way too far ahead. But that was last no. week, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> when they were like during the confrontation mm -hmm. which eventually happens and I, I hate to get right to that but just they could have written his defense mm -hmm. differently there were certain there were certain points throughout the episode where he just seemed a little too heated and hostile didn't have a reason to be mm -hmm. just at, like at the beginning when she first came on and, and she did she did come right out of the gate sort of insulting him and they cut to them being in a heated discussion mm -hmm. it just felt Something what we can get further into that, I suppose, later. Yeah, his but. confession was very I built a replica of you and you got mad at me about it. How dare you? Yeah. As far as my first impressions, I, I was, it was similar to last week where I did all my research and all that. And then I was like, wait, how did I feel about this? And I I'm kind of with you, Jimmy. I think those those middle 20 minutes or so were just tough with the with with that storyline. And especially when she kind of ends up capitulating to him Th that said, uh, you know, you know, I think they're able to salvage a relationship for me in a way. I don't know, but it's not perfectly satisfying by any means. There's some gymnastics to go through, but it gets to a point where it's like, okay, this I like, but yeah, there's just some weird moments in the middle. Like we, like I said, that the confession is to me, was just like, Oh, um, whereas I know if I'd watched this in 1991, I'd have probably been like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, tell her, Jordy. Look at all the things you did. <laughs> yeah, as a dumb 20 whatever year old I was, 22, 23 year old. Yep. Uh, oh, I man. have no doubt of like, yeah, you put that in your pipe and smoke it, lady. I kind of liked the way it felt at the end, but the problem yep. the problem is no, stop shaking your head, Jim. Just wait. The problem <laughs> I'm not is saying anything. I'm just shaking my head so they know I disagree with you. I mean, I'm Patreon, you can see the video. Uh, I'll go with you, Keith. All right. Um <laughs> I'm not going to argue it now. I'm going to let you say your piece. I'm just saying. I, li I like where they got. They just, they just didn't earn it correctly. The problem, as yeah. I said, there, there were, there were yeah. times when they could have saved it. There were times when, when they were actually showing the relationship as a, as a way that could have saved it. And, and, and a, you know, it, it, I thought they landed in a pretty decent friendship and they, they showed some steps along the way where they got there. But as far as that confrontation about the holodeck, that whole thing, it just, it could have been played so differently to make it feel like it worked Guys, after that. I say it many, every time. Something's got to be done about the holodeck. Come on. <laughs> no, the holodeck it always causes problems. There's The security breaches are yeah, a huge problem. Somebody gets hurt. And this time it was Jordy before. See, the problem is this ties into the, the, the thing that Jimmy and I have been talking about throughout this series, really. <laughs> and th this certainly leans towards Jimmy po Jimmy's point of view. And I can see why. And there, there are certain arguments that are, that are coming forth. There are certain examples that show why you shouldn't do that. But again, it's the I way they chose. I was ask you, Keith, because you were so insistent last time. There was nothing wrong as long as the person didn't find out. 
Now and they found out. Example. Yes, obviously that that's yes. not, that does that doesn't but discount my. It's. I think it does because there's always the chance they're going to find out, and if you can't do this in front of them, you shouldn't be doing it. There will be people, I'm sure, just like there are actors in porn and stuff now. There will right. be people who will be fine if you use their likeness on the holodeck for whatever mm-hmm. you want, but you can't do it to everybody if it's not their consent. I feel like you need their consent to copy their personality and likeness in that way. Okay. Or that kind of behavior. So the, we saw their discussion later mm-hmm. and that was played at the right tone to, to get, get us out of this and go, okay, whew, all right, this could have been worse. The problem is, as I said, they didn't earn it before that. That's, that's the point where they needed to get to. And it's, I think that if they had had, a, had like a stronger friendship at some point, she was able to follow along. And it seemed as though he had gone through and it was actually explained how he got from point A to point B, what she saw there. And I think that that really isn't as bad or as, as he was saying, it's not as cringeworthy as you think. It's just, this is what the, what the ah, I'm not saying it right. I, I th- she came in at the worst possible moment. For yes. Sure. But is there some innocent moment? Is there a more innocent moment that you would program into a holodeck or would it always just be the, the not the worst part? It's, I guess what she says isn't the worst thing, but it is if that's a person you've never met and you're, yeah. Yeah. I think there was a lot of other behavior besides the holodeck. I do too. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. Yes. And that's where I disagree about the ending. And I have a different perspective on how she accepted the situation. But let's work our way through the episode and then we could talk about that. Uh, You're uh, you're already right about that, though. So we'll we'll, we'll get there. (laughs) It gets off to a good start because he says he studied her schematics, which I immediately wrote down. That's dirty. Well, even before that, the fact that she's coming on the ship is because he got her attention with his work. And I'm like, how much did Jordy overwork himself to get her attention? Already, I'm thinking this was all part of his plan. Uh, that's not fair. But uh, It wait, may uh, not be. You, I, I can see that that is uh, a read that is far from assured. Let's go back, let's go back to the, the cold open here. So sure. uh, my first question was, did Picard know anything at all? They, it felt like they were like, he... I don't think that he did, but it kind of felt like they were kind of like poking you like maybe he does. I don't think well, Picard did, but Jordy's laughter and casual use of her first name and over the top enthusiasm. If Picard didn't know before, he left that mean suspecting something. Hmm. And then the next thing we see is Jordy and 10 forward, like dusting off his shoulder and stuff. Like the whole thing is so over the top. Yeah. And I can't completely get mad at Jordy for that part of it because if I were in his position, I hadn't had a date in a long time. This woman that I like have an infatuation with, even though I don't really know her is coming on board to see me. I would be like nervous and primping and whatever. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, dude, you need to, I don't know. I also think Jordy's not 22 in this, this series. Right. <laughs> so, right. but then I try to balance that with, well, in any century engineers may be a little socially awkward. And I certainly was at a young age. So yeah. I don't know. Really I wrote down he's smooth as ever. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I mean, I did appreciate though that Guinan comes into the scene here real early when Jordy's being kind of ridiculous, mm. and Guinan is immediately judgy. Mm. And even though mm. she never like says, tells him off or whatever, I think it's pretty obvious that Whoopi Goldberg does not approve of Jordy's actions in this scene. Yeah. And Jordy is not doing anything to help that because he's not taking any personal responsibility. He's like, Oh, the computer created this simulation. The computer gave her personality. He's not taking any responsibility for what he did mm-hmm. or his part in it. Yeah. And I, I am with Guinan there of being super judgy about Jordy's way. He's describing it and me like, no dude, no. I, all right. I appreciate, I was, I was intrigued as it went on. I'm not sure how, how, I, how I felt about this episode going and knowing what was probably going to happen, but I thought this was a good way to sum up what was going on in the other episode. I'm not sure if that was a scene where he actually, yeah, I, I must've been because I actually wrote it down. He named the other episode. He said, Hey, hey remember the booby trap? <laughs> I was like, Oh yeah. <laughs> but, they have to do that on the procedural television. And it had been over a year since the first episode. <laughs> But it, I, I thought it was just funny that they actually used the title of the episode. At, at any rate, it felt fun 
in, in the sense that I was kind of with him up to, I mean, with the way that he was summarizing it, we knew, we knew a little bit more about what had been done and what it hadn't, but I thought the look on her face when she started, you know, asking questions about what do you mean? You know, was like, and Han realizes that Leia and Luke are brother and sister. It's just like, I just thought she was like, "Mm," and I felt her discomfort. So that part, that scene felt true. Yeah. All right. So I I think what it was about the scene for me is he was spelling it out in such a way. We had some confirmation that he wasn't using it as a sex bot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And this is something that, that if he felt comfortable enough to say this to someone out in the open, there's a simulation I did, blah, 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 blah. It wasn't like I've been having a secret relationship with this thing. And, and this is, you know, this is so tantalizing. I would argue you know? he is definitely having an emotional affair with that thing, especially those yeah. final lines that she said about like, I touched the ship, I'm touching you or whatever. Yeah. But would you say that just the way he's acting, he's acting like they're already like practically dating. When he says, I don't necessarily think it's going to be romantic. And I'm like, "Uh uh-huh. No, I don't buy that at all. You do. You're already picturing the two of you married in your mind. Yeah. That's what people say when they're they're lying to themselves, but still at least, at least he is saying that it, at least he's acknowledging that this friendship is a decent goal here. Yeah. He didn't know she was married. I mean, they have space Google, right? Oh, that's that's much later in the episode. But yeah, right. well, like he says, he never thought to ask. And I actually did buy that. That felt <laughs> oh, I believe to that me. too. Yeah. But this is also this is this is this is further evidence that did they ever indicate that this is it's been like an ongoing or more than one time thing, even how well, current Leah was it? Sa- Leah says you may have 12 different programs and whatever. And mm-hmm. that was my thinking, but I don't know. I think the more I watch this episode, the more I think he probably was just this once, but I do think he's watched it on replay. And I do think he's replayed it in his mind a hell of a lot of times. The mind thing I will buy. Certainly. Um, I'm not saying he did some, like he's gone back in and interacted with her again, but you can see he can watch the recording. I bet he's gone back in and, and looked at it. Even if he didn't like watch the whole thing play out, just like, Oh, I want to see her again. I'm just going <laughs> to go back in for a second. So he goes to the transport a meter and transport technician Hubble's back and she had a line this time. I was like, yay, good for her. And then uh, Leah beams over and of course she immediately clashes and hates him because that's how this type of episode has to go. Well, you know, he's I, was win her over. <laughs> <laughs> I liked though that as he's arguing with her, Jordy says the theory and the application don't quite jive and he's totally missing that his theory of what she's like and the application of what she's like don't jive. Nice. When he's talking about the engine, I was like, no, it's so meta. And he's just not getting it. He's so dense there. And Jordy's like playing her. He is leaving information out on purpose, but using what he knows about her to try to get close to her. And I did not like that. That felt there there. Yeah. There, there is the line. Um, There were a couple of things where where he was just being really clumsy about uh, talking about information about her. Let me make you this for dinner. Oh, I love that. Oh, you do? I didn't yeah. know that. No, did not like that either. No. And, that sounds uh, like he's also going to put something in the dinner. I never <laughs> went that drink. far. But yeah. yeah. Before we get there, there was something. So she got that phone call, which we now can probably assume was from her husband. Yeah. And she came back and her attitude seemed to have changed sort of drastically. There, there have been like maybe a scene or two in between that. And I was, I almost thought that we were being tricked there because I thought he had gone like to the simulation mm. to interact with the other uh, Leah. Wow. And I was like, Oh God, why would you do that? And I was relieved that it was because she, their interaction seemed to be going much more agreeably. Something seemed to soften. And she was like walking through some things and he was being able to show her more about himself. And it's like, huh. Keith, you just created my other alternate episode, which is, <laughs> It's like the Brady Bunch episode where Peter and his made-up twin who wears glasses both have dates at the the dance. (laughs) So uh, he keeps going back and forth between the holodeck and the real world with the different layers. And so (laughs) eventually... Very Barclay-esque. Yeah. That's my alternate episode is they come in the holodeck and Barclay's using that program with Leah. Oh, "Oh, sorry, was it yours? Amazing. (laughs) That would be... There there is... There's the other line that I've, I've mentioned before in the past. So uh, I knew Leah walked in on her program. I, in my memory, I thought she walked in on Jordy using the program. So the whole right. time I kept waiting for him to go in there to like, 
learn how to better interact with her, like practice on, on the yes. holodeck. And I do think it's it looks better for Jordy that he was not doing that. She was checking up logs and found this simulation. And the simulation she found is the one we saw. The up and above board, mm-hmm. I'm helping you fix the ship in an emergency situation. Even though in that episode I said he went too far with it, and he did, and that's the part she saw. But the initial reason for the simulation was legit. I think that's that also kind of affected my opinion of w- the way things went, because I was so relieved that it wasn't that because right at, right at that point, I was like, Oh my God, he's using the simulation. She's going to yeah. come in and see him doing that. And it's going to be just a mess. And I'm glad they didn't go for that. Go too cheap and too like, uh, you know, cringy. So the next scene I've got notes on of here is in Jordy's quarters when he's getting ready for the dinner, he puts on soft jazz first, which is such a <laughs> bad cliche. And thankfully he changes it, but they changes it to Brahms. And I was like, Oh God, on point. But uh, thankfully he realized wait, it was actually was Brahms. You didn't like hear that? The yeah, he asked for Brahms and then they said, Oh no, that's too cheesy or whatever. He had Brahms playing after the soft jazz before he sold on class. Did he actually say that by name? I, I completely yes, missed did. that. He sure did. Huh? And then he taps his crystal ball, which I guess is like the futuristic version of a lava lamp so to set the mood. Uh, but then she shows up and he's pulling out her seat, offering her a drink. And when she says no, he's saying, are you sure? And then he's talking about her hair immediately. And mm. this felt like to me whether so obviously sexual harassment in the workplace, not cool. Yeah. And it felt like that. Yeah. But. You could argue, and I'll get the point, that this is also their social place because they live here as well. But even then, it still feels like he is invited her over just to talk, but in his mind, it's a date. He's treating mm-hmm. it like a date, and she doesn't realize she's walking into a date. Yeah. And again, that may have been something I would have done at age 20 or whatever. So I, they're part of me is like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, I kind of get because you're afraid she'll say no, so you're just going to... But at the same time, at least from now perspective that is so wrong and so if i were her Mm. i get why she left i would be so super uncomfortable she looks uncomfortable the whole time and it's just everything he does is is wrong there well i just want to say i'm i'm 100 on board there that was one one of my notes was there there should no there should be no let's how let's set the mood there should not even be like a thing he's trying to do it's too Mm -hmm. soon he needs to be assigned the harassment module on the enterprise for probably the fifth time he's had to take it yeah, he's probably the guy who's like, "What do you? What? Are, what am I in this class again for? I know, what, <laughs> I, I know what harassment is. I don't say anything bad to him. I tell well, him I like their hair. Their compliments. <laughs> and her whole behavior in that scene is not only uncomfortable, but feels like she's appeasing him until she can make her escape. Yes. Like even mm. the whole thing about talking about being possessive of the ship and mm. being thought of as cold and unyielding, it feels like she's handling him." And she just wants out. And no wonder she immediately got out. Interesting. I, yeah, I was with her there. I'm like, if I were her, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little scared. I've been put in a position I don't want to be in. And I don't know how to escape this situation. Let me appease this guy until I can make my escape. Yeah. She does. She call herself. I, I wrote cold cerebral lacking in humor. I was like, yeah, that's my kind of girl. <laughs> I, know, but I, think, yeah. I think she's saying that to try to be like, you don't want to know me. Let me go. That's yeah. what I'm reading yeah. that as. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, if you drop that without any context and show it to somebody, they'd be like, so he kills her, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. I mean, yeah. That was the alternate episode. He's obsessed and he kills her. I mean, not yeah. my alternate, but. We've seen more things along these lines of, you know, where it's, you know, you're turning the rom-com on its head where, you know, lots of the rom-coms go back and watch them sociopathic or psychopathic even yeah you know those ones are easily cut into horror trailers first i want to go back and say that i I had a note for i loved brahms's uh i'm not buying it faces earlier when when he was doing like the gimney is great in this episode um i think she's awesome so and this is the the note that where i started tying into uh the this the debate with jimmy about like should you do this or should you, I mean, as far as far as simulations and so on, the, the moral parts of it, this was a good example of the danger that I was talking about and trying to do something like that. If you're not the kind of person who can compartmentalize and part of this is it feels like they were doing a lot of like 80 sitcom tropes. I think you kind of touched on that, Stephen, in the sense, but it's also, the, the, we've, we've seen this kind of thing 
I, I can't place exactly where, but it just doesn't fit on in this futuristic setting on a starship. And I think we, we would have probably laughed off a lot of that behavior again, like, oh, it's just some 20 year old kid doing this thing and trying to impress this girl and blah, blah, blah. But it, it doesn't fit for the professionalism and, and the level of ex- yeah. expertise at play, uh, the setting, the situ- all kinds of things like that. And I'm sorry to say, if we'd watched this episode even five years ago, I probably would not be so against it. I huh. really think it hasn't aged well, especially, I mean, not that I wasn't aware of that stuff before, but so much of the culture has woken up, for lack of a better term, to, uh, sorry, so much of the male culture, the female culture already <laughs> stuff. But, yeah, and I, I think that probably <laughs> helps her performance because she's like, I yeah. thought the same thing. Like she's yeah. experienced this in real life and she's yep. just drawing on it. Yeah. And I wish, mm. I, I don't know if like she thought I'm a guest star, so I don't have the ability to, to speak up and say, hey, you realize what you're doing here? But God, she had to, it feels like she's playing it for real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. So got, Jordy goes back to 10 forward with Guinan. And he's got a game in front of him that she sits down and starts making moves like consecutive moves, not even taking turns with them. At first I was like, Oh, were they like in the middle of the game and she got up and then she came back. And I'm like, no, she's just, he's just staring at it. And she's playing with the pieces. I don't understand quite what's going on. there. <laughs> but the, the comment about the old visor, like you see what you want to see. I'm like, that's about as nice as she could lay the smack down on him. And she needs to lay the smack down on him. Yep. No, yeah. I, I I love that. I, I I thought maybe it w- went a couple steps too far, but I had an all caps rose colored visor. I, I didn't think it, it went at all too far. I was I wondered if Whoopi saw the script and said, "Put me in it." I want to smack Jordy a bit because it kind of felt like she was an add in that wasn't needed, and yet mm-hmm. I could see in Whoopi's face every bit of the scene mm-hmm. that she was not happy with this mm-hmm. plot and she was gonna. No, like I'm, I'm, not, not, I'm not saying it went too far, like depth wise. I'm saying that exact part, bit of the conversation for the for the joke to land. Mm. It went a couple of steps beyond where they could have. I actually, actually used the phrase rose colored visor because that's what she was uh, kind of going yeah. for. Yeah, but it should have been like a two liner, like a ooh, gotcha. <laughs> so as we get to the end of this plot, Jordy's angry at her for the crime of <laughs> trying to be friendship. So cringy, so awful. She's acting apologetic, which it, it, to me is like, okay, this is 1990s. This isn't 24th century because the woman yeah. in the workplace is going to have to act apologetic and make amends because otherwise it could hurt her career, even though it shouldn't be her responsibility. Uh, and, it's all on him. and then they, they sit there and they laugh about it at the end. And I'm sorry. I get that we're supposed to feel like it's all okay between them. But to me, it's still like I'm trapped on the ship with him. I have to play along. I can't wait to get off and get back to my husband. And maybe she doesn't even have a husband. Maybe she made the whole thing up because she just wants to get away from him so bad. I don't even know. But I, this whole time I'm like, she is trapped and she is doing the best she can under the circumstances, but that poor woman. And now every other like novel, or I don't know if they mentioned on on the show again, but the novels, when they say they're friends after this, I'm never going to read that the same way again. I'm going to be like, no, you're not. You are not. You, she has been pressured to be friendly to you for the sake of her career. She does not like you and should not like you. Right. Wait, I, I still disagree. I think it's I think it's just poor writing as far as the the explanations and the way that the encounters. I think that there there were other positive things that happened during the episode that would justify this in a in a better context or in a better support. But yeah, they 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 the beginning of it. They set up too many of those dated '90s and I guess decades after too. If you're thinking mm-hmm. about it, really, we, we were saying this. It's just that it relies on too many of those tropes of the uh, toxic masculinity. It's not toxic. Max. It's it's, it's um, when Jordy's angry at her, that's toxic masculinity. Yes. But it's the well, no, that's no. Right. That phrase, that phrase means something entire, d- entirely different. I'm talking about like the the hapless nice guy routine of I, I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to get a date. I'm just trying to do this. I'm just trying to blah, blah, blah. And the nice uh, guy, the- it, but the, it's, it's, it's yeah, the eighties, nineties, two thousands, a rom com trope mm-hmm. and sitcom trope of telling you know, telling little white lies to get here, uh, doing research to oh, I'm, I'm going to do this, you know, the, you know, like the high school dating thing of yep. I like the kind of music you like, you know, or, you know what I'm saying? They they, make, they try to make it seem like they're all written by men though. Yeah, well, oh. I'm not saying that, that that they aren't incorrect for a reason or bad for a reason. I'm just saying that. 
that informed a lot of things that that dragged this in a direction that it didn't need to go. As soon as she says she's married, that should be the end of that for sure. But even before then, when, if Jordy is just professional, whether she's married or not, they can still fight over everything else. And, you know, we talked about this with uh, the episode where Riker and the defense, the, the woman who's like the minister of defense, are fighting about how to handle the rebels or whatever in mm-hmm. that episode. And we, we all comment on there's, there's, no, there's no sexual chemistry here, but, you know, I, but they, they were going back and forth. These guys could have gone back and forth, too. And it, there could have been some kind of chemistry and some kind of heat, but not that kind of heat necessarily. Yeah. Then it develops into an actual friendly kind of thing. Not even a rivalry, but maybe kind of a rivalry. I mean, because I thought that part was interesting where it's like, oh, yeah. you did this. Yes, because, you know, I wanted you to see this and here's something we did with it. Because I think the idea of a developer and somebody in the field and the pushback mm-hmm. they were both doing, I thought those parts were good. But the 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 other part of it was, was driving through. And, and I think, I guess the writers were like, we want to get to the moment where she finds out. And it's like, it is a powerful moment in a, in a show that you want to make about sexual harassment in the workplace. That's yeah. a powerful moment. I think you make a good point, Stephen. I think it got overshadowed by the rest of this stuff. It did. Yes. I, I think there were good moments there. And, and you know, I when Keith mentions the end, I thought of one thing. And, Jimmy, you thought of another. But I agree with you, Jimmy. When she she does the turn, I didn't like it. I was like, oh, I don't like the, and it. And I was just like, okay, fine. I'll go with it. I didn't necessarily go. But the very, very, very end, now I'm doing the Fletch thing. Uh, with the very, very, very end, when when they have the conversation, she goes to take the call from subspace, which I know we've talked about, but I still don't know what subspace is. She goes to take the the, the subspace call, and then Jordy's left sitting there. That, those moments were nice because I mean, and even if it was the whole episode was about he knows she's married, but he knows she's she's the you know he he thinks she would be the perfect girl for him, whatever. But he has to live in that world, even. And then all she does the whole episode is just impress him even more and show how great she is. And even she appreciates him. Then that moment has even more power or more wistfulness of, man, I'm great friends with this great engineer who I could be in love with, but there's this other guy. Yeah. Which again, I think I still could have that feeling there, but it's. I'll say I'll say it's tainted <laughs> by everything that happens before. All right. I want to say that's that's one of the things I felt actually. I, I didn't write that mm. down. I, I didn't articulate it correctly, but I think you really got there. Um, there are several things I wanted to say. Let's start with with that point. When I I, I actually almost convinced myself that that comp, that uh, her discovering the the hologram wasn't going to happen, and I think before that they started getting getting to an interesting point where. Uh, what, you know, Jordy found out she was married. That was it. He was like, okay. And it seemed like this was progressing in that, um, a much more conventional and comfortable storyline. And it's fine. You know, the, the, the profession, the professional respect that they were developing for each other. Mm-hmm. I liked that. And then, as you said, it's like, they said, well, we have to do that. We have to show that thing where she finds it and does this thing. And it inserts that completely just you know that absurd defense of i was just trying to blah, blah, blah and just yeah the getting yeah, angry at you like because you, you you got mad at me yeah uh, i also uh, thought that part of it was they couldn't figure out how much more of the warp engine and all that to to dive into to actually have them debate about with specifics and be. i i and i could i i could relate to that uh just you know what i mean like God, I think we're we're running out of stuff. But I don't know. Maybe you didn't you didn't make up new terms. I don't know. And again, it's Star Trek, so you know whatever terms you come up with, somebody's gonna be like, "Oh, well, gotta I gotta put that in the glossary or whatever." But mm. but yeah, I think. All right. So here's fun. here's the quandary I wanted to ask about them going 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 uh, going back to the marriage thing. Do you think that she should have been married as far as the writing goes? Do you think it need that needed to be done to cut it off? Do you think that I, it makes me just, sad that you would need that to cut it mm-hmm. off? I mean, be cut off regardless. Yeah. And the, uh, I guess, and even uh, not sadder, but just as poignant is you're just not my kind of guy. I just don't feel that way about you. I mean, he gets friend zone. He could be friend zone without her having a guy even. And that is a sad, that's a sad 
thing too because because he he got friend zoned by the girl in a uh, in booby trap and christy who we chose as our crush over leah yeah. Brahms last time which now i'm yeah. regretting but because i'm <laughs> not going to choose her this time she's married right the, the only thing about that i i kind of like the idea that the computer <laughs> that the, the the ai was strong and accurate enough to actually project what kind of relationship they might have had and feeling feeling like the feeling like a bit of that sort of there but the prop again the time of the writing uh the things they they chose to throw in there just made it so cringeworthy it could have just it could have been something else it could have been right there well and it, it, it may in it part of it it's like oh well we want to still make jordy seem like a good guy and it's like no everything you did you know his speech did not make him look like the good guy right yes even having her yeah. do the turnaround does not make it him going to her and being like, you know what? I realized how stupid I was. This and this and this and this. I should have never done these. I'm an engineer. I'm an idiot. I've never been good with women, obviously. Blah, blah, blah. Here's why. I never learned how to read. Whatever. All that. <laughs> There's so many other ways it could have gone. And, and you know, I know some of what we're doing is just saying, I wanted to see that episode. But mm-hmm. part of what we're doing is saying, I didn't want to see this episode. And you don't want that with this character, like you said, Jimmy, early, uh, early in this episode, you're not sure you like Jordy right now. And, and, and I get that. And I'm compart- speaking of car- compartmentalizing. I'm blocking that out. <laughs> yeah. I'm to block that out, yeah. but it's still going to be there. I mean, I know it's going to be back there every time Jordy talks to a girl, but when he's doing his job or just being good time, Jordy, whatever that means. <laughs> and part of that's just loving LeVar Burton too. But I think you can love LeVar Burton and, to have issues with Jordy. And actually my last note about this storyline is, you know, it got to the end of the episode created by Gene Roddenberry. And in my mind, his visor is, wasn't on that whole scene. I mean, they're his singing vi- 10 forward. Yeah. Oh. His visor is definitely on his, you know, but in my mind, it's not like I'm seeing every emotion from him, uh, which is to say he was able to convey a, an amazing amount of emotions without eyes, you know, and lots of times. Oh, you mean like, well, like his visor was physically not on him, not like turned off. No, it, it, like in my mind, like I could see all of the Varber. Yes. All right. Yeah. Like at the end, it's like, oh, I literally rewound it <laughs> to check. But I, I and I, I think that's a credit to LeVar Burton, again, being a really good actor who doesn't necessarily get called on to do a lot of acting, you know, for better or worse in, in this series. Not every week, obviously. But he's also obviously a engaging uh, presence. But I just thought he was really good there. And. I don't think I thought this and I, I don't, I, the thoughts ever crossed my mind in other episodes that like, Oh, I can't see his eyes. And it just made me think lots of times in acting, we talk about, I really want, you really want to have eye contact and all that. And this guy's doing this, all this stuff without making eye contact, which I think is pretty good. I mean, that, you know, blind actors do it and kudos to them as well. I mean, I think that's impressive too, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know what he can see through that, but I know yeah. we've talked about it, but I know what Jordy can see. I don't know what LeVar Burton can see. But so on, on the subject of, of compartmentalization, as far as uh, like canon and head canon, you know, this is something that, that I brought up before. I don't know if I brought it up on the show before, but it's the idea of when you're dealing with these, these kinds of sci-fi properties, especially like superhero stuff, comic book yeah. stuff, when you have uh, all these books and just so much lore and so many people just writing things and throwing things in there throughout a season. Yeah. And it's just like, you can have your favorite character just get trashed by one writer, one episode of throwing this in there. And we, well, we have to put this in the canon now. Mm. This is what they are. And it's just, it's, it's frustrating sometimes. And you know, it's, 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 it's highlights the challenges of being a writer on, on something like that. And also you know, honestly being a fan of a, of a particular, particular character when you have something that spans this many kinds of things. I mean, how do you just yeah. decide? Like Jimmy was even Jimmy was just saying, you know, there there was a what was it, a book with Leah Brahms and Jordy going forward to being friends. You know, based they had to like write off of that. Well, this resolution said they were friends, and so there we are. But this episode ruined Jimmy's childhood. Yeah, <laughs> it's what I mean. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't my favorite episode from childhood. I just like Leah Brahms. But, I know. but no, no, no. That, that's the yeah. It's it's just there. There's so many things like that too. That it's just. Uh, a, a few episodes here and there of your favorite series when you go back that didn't age well little things about the character that you that episodes you haven't seen about them issues you haven't read cartoons hey, you haven't seen movies you haven't seen yet i'm a woody allen fan so 
that is a minefield Ooh. literally to Ooh. go back and go through. So, yeah. Yeah. But, but I, I, again, that's a different level altogether, but lots of his characters are him. And so that's a, another gray area, but you know, and I, many times I've said, I reject this as canon, whether it's TNG, but especially TOS. And I, I guess that's mm. what we do. And I, I think we're allowed to do it as Disney's not the only one that gets to do it. <laughs> I think we get to do it too. Okay. So, uh, uh, I, I Jim, can, we, can we have a cancel calls for episode, Jimmy? Right, like, I, I mean, we could. <laughs> we might be sure. Yeah, I've, I've said this many times in Search for Spock. I don't like them killing Kirk's son right away. That I cannot, that in my brain, I can't undo. That, I feel like that has to stay. But, but other, other moments, I think, especially the original series, I think I, I can't undo. But there's not a lot of those in TOS. There's not as many of like those moments. Although, well, there is the you know the the McCoy speciesism, speciesism, and there's definitely yeah. some cringy. There's some cringy stuff back there too. So, but it's it's something that they that, you know that, I guess as, as an example of something they made a persistent enough feature that you can't just like right. lift it out of the character, right. even right. though you want it's, to. It's it, as and as I often say, we're becoming this is the Family Guy part of this podcast, mm. especially in the latest season. They they're pretty much just like coming straight out and saying like. Well, I remember Brian and Ida, that whole thing. They, they, they don't, do you see that? The, 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 the first episode was, you know, had a, had a lot of transphobia, uh, transphobic aspects to it. Right. Yeah. And they kind of rewrote it in the sense of going, well, okay, well, Brian went back and actually tried to have a real relationship without this, the kind of knee jerk, oh my God, oh, vomit, you know? Right, right. Well, and, um, you know, and obviously they have a lot of, jokes that go the further you go back the worse they are but especially quagmire they they this season they've been mm. like they're just like the characters literally say it like do you ever know quagmire's kind of boring lately yeah because yeah, they I yeah we, yeah, yeah well we i don't enjoyed know that meta joke i appreciate yeah. it so yeah, yeah. oh man i know they were putting on new episodes so they don't let him talk anymore yeah. <laughs> so what? his thing this last week was he's a cat expert they were like we don't even know you're a cat expert and he, he once again was like well they kind of took away what I what I do, so <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Interesting. What I used to do doesn't work. It's a problem. It's problematic. Oh, well, that's some catching so. up to do. But yeah, the the, the Seth MacFarlane stuff. That's a, a great example for me and some other things that are some of my favorite shows ever. I can't watch them end to end and go without having to eat, like eat around like some of the misogyny and racism and other things they do. And it's just like, oh, come on. I've been going through, and this is just in my brain, not all of my gaffes in my life, although often that's what you do. But I wrote a, a column in law school for uh, the law school monthly. Uh, they called me the sex guy, but a lot of it was- Wait, you, you know, like they, like your, your colleagues I, called you, was, Stephen Woosley, the sex guy? <laughs> I was told years later, or a couple years later, someone was like, she's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a mentor at the school. I work at the school. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And she's like, I'm like, how's the, the monthly going? They're like, pretty good. They're like, they miss you. They call you the sex guy. <laughs> like, okay. Cause I wrote about sex a lot, but mm. in my brain, I'm like, should I go look at them to see the thing? I mean, in my brain at the time, I was like, I'm being very positive about it, women. Mm. But now I'm like, Oh, if I go back, oh, oh boy, am I? So it's, you know, and I know I've done things in real life since then much worse, um, <laughs> but I haven't written about them. Or, well, yeah, not explicitly. Yeah. 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 It's. I mean, it's a overall. It's a good thing for us to be going in this direction. The problem isn't that we're going this direction. It's the problem that we weren't already here. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Which kind of goes to last week, where the problem is that they, they should move into the future, but they're not ready because yeah. And I also really wish, as we've said before, we've asked some people, but I really wish we had a female co-host again. Like we we used to have a lot of women on the show. Lately, it's not just women. We just haven't had any guests come on the show. It's just been the three of us, even though we've been on Zoom, which I feel like would make it more convenient. But if you're a woman listening and you're a Star Trek fan, reach out to us. We'd really like to add a female perspective back into the podcast on a regular basis. We even made a hologram program. <laughs> oh, God. Come on. God. <laughs> we're, we're a friendly, welcoming group. We won't do what Jordy did to Leah to you. <sighs> well, um, and we're all married here, so we'll be very professional. We're all married. So. Yeah. Well, that, all right. that's you, that, you can. I, I was laughing that as that as an excuse, <laughs> but you, you had to consider like the like the crush aspect mm-hmm. that could make some people un- uncomfortable. I have considered that. So it's but hard. I, I mean, thought that maybe we should drop it. How can you frame it? Really, this is. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant 
for people who want to come on the show if yes. they have crushes on us. Oh. <laughs> and they'll be like, I'm not sure I want to come on here. I mean, we've, uh, most of us are choosing a man at least once for a crush. And we've had women on the show and they, they generally choose men, although Marianne has chosen women almost as often. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's how I justify it in my head that like, it's not necessarily that, but at the same time, I have thought about that segment and wondered if we should drop it. And if you guys want to drop it, I'm okay with that. That's or not. No, I don't know. I just had to, had to, had to think about it. It's just, okay. it's one of those things it's, you, you you see this 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 kind of objectification come up in a lot of other mm-hmm. media and milieu and it's just, it's, is it is it something is, is it harmful objectification is it something that that feeds into misogyny in that sense is it more is it more something that feeds into like body positivity is, is a thing that pops into my head i can't think of, i can't think of the actual the term i want to go for here but just i mean across the board a lot of a lot of the problems with, we have with you know the entertainment business in general, yeah. And I don't know. I mean, there there there. I can I can think of like other other examples of things like that that come up in popular culture from both men and women, do, including things like that on on their their shows. Not necessarily as a fixed feature of it. But then is is that a justification or not? You know, my argument is very reactionary because it's 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 not even argument it's just reactionary (laughs) explanation a bad excuse which is i feel like sex has always been a part of star trek and sci-fi yeah um but it doesn't have to be in the it doesn't have to be in the pejorative sense we're not going to lose any sexiness moving forward you know we've got a lot of jerry ryan seven of nine was obviously there's a reason (laughs) seven of nine he's a lady you can't choose her as your crush (laughs) yeah well there you go problem solved (laughs) <laughs> you 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 fix the issue for everyone now. We're just like right there. <laughs> Speaking Let's of take a week to think about it and revisit yeah. it in the next yeah. week's episode and decide if we want to keep it or not. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, but I agree. And if you have opinions, it's way too late. We've already made the decision. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> this isn't gonna go up for months and months from now. But if you want to weigh in. You can weigh in on if you think I should go back and edit it out of the first 200 episodes of this podcast. It's a huge project. But if you think strongly that I should, please email Jerome at IBDpresents.com. And if if we feel like it would better the show to go back and re-edit them, then that I will do that as I can, bit by and bit. If you, and if you you would actually on, do that? I would. Mm. I don't want to, but I would. And if you do if, have if a crush felt on, it would represent us better. You do have a crush on one of us. We are all married, but we can still talk about warp engines together. Sure. <laughs> sure. Or, or, your, or your favorite food. You know, you could come on and say, Stephen, I know your favorite food is really? Oh, huh, that's weird. And I've always <laughs> been flattered by any crush on me, whether I'm interested back or not. So mm. you can tell me you have a crush on me. I'll find it flattering. By the way, the answer is pizza. So there yeah. you go. <laughs> I like pizza too. Okay. So the only other notes, oh God, this is going to be bad following what we just had. But yeah. It's the last notes I have with the Jordy plot. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I was going to make fun of Jordy's casual clothes, his sweater and everything, even though it looked pretty comfortable. Yeah. I liked Leah's purple dress. I kind of liked the jumpsuits Jordy and Leah, Leah wore to climb into the tube. Because uh-huh. at first I was like, she is not dressed to go in there. And I was like, oh, yeah. okay. They had something. They, they changed. I liked, so I yeah, I, I, I liked her. Uh, Art. Sorry, I like I liked her outfit, like her dress, and like the the oh. futuristic legging kind of thing that yeah. happened, like with the boot yeah. combo, which is kind of yeah. yeah. I like that she let her hair down. She did <laughs> <laughs> that too. Besides Leo, we did have a couple other guest stars. Uh, Ensign Pavlik, which was the engineering ensign, was oh, yeah. played by Jana Marie Hupp, who is yeah. best known for Independence Day, Ed, Barton Fink, and Friends. And she, she her trick credits is she she will play another character next season. She was says. on also on Seinfeld. She's on the episode The Conversion, which I had to look up. And this one is one I I barely remember. I had to look up the picture of her in it, and then I was like, oh yeah. She so this, that episode, she's of the Latvian Orthodoxy religion. And so to marry her, George has to convert. So he decides he's gonna do that to marry her. Complications ensue, of course. Kramer gets involved. And he finally gets goes through the whole conversion. Uh, part of it's for him to get away from his parents. And then she says that she is going, she's moving to Latvia for a year. So it doesn't matter. And then we never see her again. So good episode that I don't usually think about. 
Our other new incident this week was the incident navigation, Wesley's old station, incident Surreal Rager, or Rager. She was played by Lanai Chapman, who's best known for Rat Race, Space Above and Beyond, Final Fantasy, White Men Can't Jump. And this is the first of four episodes she'll play the character. She also did two episodes of Seinfeld. That's right. She was in the episode uh, at the old people, but it's, it's the old Emmy man. Nominated, the old man, yes. An Emmy nominated episode. She's the one who. <laughs> Housekeeper. Yes, housekeeper. She's Jamaican, and uh, George says he wants to dip his head in oil. God, and, all right. And so, so it happens. So two yeah. things there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> On one thing that's always bothered me about Seinfeld was the unrealistic way. I don't know if I mentioned this. Jerry, George, and Kramer could just seduce any woman if it if it served the plot in some way. Right. The the janitor at the at the you know at the work hill. Is that wrong? I, <laughs> Yeah. I I struggled with George the most because of my whatever. I, I I guess I still do, but then I'm like, well, Larry David did pretty good, but I don't know if he did before, <laughs> you know. And it, it, it you know, it, it, obviously there's a BS monkeys don't fly. Yeah, but you know, Jerry makes sense because he's funny and he, he's a good looking guy. Kramer's weird and he, you know, that kind of thing. But the George one is tough. It it does it makes sense that he gets dates. It doesn't make sense that he dates these beautiful women. But well, I mean, not just, not even just again, that. I know guys that, that have nothing on George and, and do well. So it's more it's more about like the character being about that for for so much of the series, and suddenly just is I want to do that. I've done it. Oh, and yeah, yeah for an episode. So that I think that's fair. <laughs> Especially the housekeeper or the or the the nurse, and yeah, yeah, she reprised that role in the pilot, uncredited. Funny you say that, Keith, because that apl- applies to my alternate episode. <laughs> this happens in two different episodes of Seinfeld. So there's the one where Jerry wants to date the roommate of the girl. He's dating the one girl who never laughs at his jokes. Oh, right. all the yeah, yeah, that episode. So then he meets her roommate, and she laughs at everything, and has a great laugh, and he decides he's in love with her, and he wants to do the switch. Yeah. so he she's into it <laughs> yeah so in the jerry episode george eventually comes back and yeah and she's into it and george and jerry's like i'm not an orgy kind of guy so he doesn't do it and then george tries to do the same thing and sure enough she's into it and yeah so that my so my own episode is leia brahms goes down sees the the hologram it's like oh all right I can get into this. So this actually connects with your theory. Of, it doesn't make sense. Of course it doesn't make sense. Any woman dating any of us makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean that as a, a aspersion against you two guys. Just all men. In general. It's fair. It's fair. Yeah. Well, I, I'm I would say as, anybody. I'm surprised this race continues. Yeah. No, I, I would say aspersions against me and probably Jamie in particular are, are, are applicable. Um, I just. I agree. My my life, like eighty nine percent of it is just failure after failure after just just kind of just it's just ah uh, and night, me probably doing you know Jordy type mistakes mm. as many men oh, probably do yeah. with throughout their lives oh, yeah. and just yeah. kind of I'm sure you know. I made mistakes along those lines when I was in college. I like to think I haven't made them in a very long time, but mm. I've also been married for. A while, Ever. which helps Ever. 12 years. <laughs> that helps a lot. The last 12 years. Lot. So that, that helps keep you out of trouble. So I actually do have notes on the other plot. Me too. The F plot, <laughs> as I'll call <laughs> it. Even though it was the B plot, it was just so far down in importance. Yeah. I like the idea of the living spaceship and the mm-hmm. fish look mm. like a fish. And the because so recently I read, I'm reading the Star Trek Titan series with Captain Riker. And they're set to explore a region of space that has been explored again. They're back to their roots of exploratory. And they find a region of space where there's all these different creatures that live in space and a whole ecosystem of different living creatures. And that this and the far, the far point aliens from the pilot, those types of things are a, a main creature in this ecosystem. And so it made me think in this episode, I was like, oh, that's so cool. I love the idea of these creatures that live in space and, and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's neat to explore that. And then immediately Tinder, McCart kills yeah. one. Tim Woodman. Yeah. yeah. Then the, they the, the the data ship that he went over with and kind of yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 I yeah when they kill it I'm like oops we killed your cat um <laughs> your pregnant cat 
Sorry. But I thought that was actually, that might have been the best, other than the, I, I do like the very, 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 very end. I I'm thought, sorry, ma'am. I accidentally killed your cat. I'd like to replace him. Oh, well, how are you at catching mice? <laughs> Mary Poppins joke, sorry. That's right. I thought Picard's reaction was very just, and again, I, so good. Probably why I, I tied into a cat, which is, that's just the way I feel. It's like, oh, that's so great. The thing, ah, oh, you bit me, <laughs> whatever. Uh, <laughs> no, but, but you know, he, he did the right thing in both instances and it yeah. turned out terrible. So, but then when it kind of turns around, it's like, oh, okay, maybe this will be good. No, Picard's still set. Patrick Stewart's acting of shock when he kills him yeah. is great. And the fact that Troy's like, well, you followed all the regulations. He's like, mm. doesn't matter. We're out here yeah. to explore and we killed this thing. Yeah. I loved it so much. And then the whole pregnancy yeah. twist and doing the C-section birth scene was, was fun. But my complaint there is they're just going to abandon the baby. They're not going to stay and study it or anything. Well, and mean, then once the, once it latches yeah. on, they decide they have to take it somewhere where it's going to get what it needs to survive. But before that, they were just going to abandon it and not try to help it get what it, it needs to survive. It's how they learn. It's instinct. <laughs> they Picard says to leave the baby, go 500 KPH, which I assume is kilometers per hour. Yeah. That seems really slow for a starship, but I don't feel like they've used that measurement before it's always impulse or thrusters mm-hmm. or whatever and then it was nursing on them like a mother like it was their <laughs> mother and i i was tickled by that this whole plot line i thought was interesting it, it, especially at the beginning it was, it was powerful and it creates and the the ending's a nice scene i thought the the special effect for the birthing was very cheesy but i did like and i think we are you already said this i did like the design of the creature i thought that was very interesting yeah i thought that was that that was really cool the baby coming out was kind of and then Crusher saying, congratulations, you. Mm-hmm. it's a baby something. <laughs> that was a great line. So well but delivered. I did have this question. And again, appropriate to this episode and the conversations we've been having, I think, or inappropriate, if you will. How can we can see some animals born on TV that way? Like the baby coming right out, mm-hmm. but not humans. Ugh, you never, yeah. I mean, I don't want to. <laughs> I do not yeah. want to. <laughs> this was pretty pretty bloodless. It was, yeah. yeah, right there. Yeah, there's that. And with that, bad special effects. That helps, yeah. There, there, <laughs> I mean, probably no good for the course. time, but bad. Yeah, yeah, it looked really Quite bad. Today, I started thinking about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why did they name this episode after the F plot, though, instead of the A plot? Clearly, Galaxy's Child is a reference to the fish thing. Hmm. Oh, I thought it was, that's the version of phone Galaxy would be up to at that point. It was Galaxy's Child. Uh, yeah, uh, and, and all you know, the Enterprise D is a Galaxy class starship. So if it thinks the Enterprise is its uh, mother, it's got that kind of meaning. <laughs> My last note, and this is a callback to last week as well, is I think, it's, I think it's talking about the creatures. I know it's dangerous to generalize, but some generalizing is coming. That, whenever yeah. anyone starts with, I know we shouldn't generalize. Yeah. Just, you know what? Just generalize. Yeah. You, you, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to do a preamble. One I touched on, I just didn't say it in these words, but I was, I saying I would, would have written Jordy's defense differently. You know, it, was, it came off too indignant. Mm-hmm. You already covered that. I do think it could have been worse, but I don't necessarily think that's like a, a point in its favor. Right. It just, did he ever say sorry? No. Oh, so maybe God, that, man. maybe apology quote unquote was, was originally written for the Fonz, so that's why he yeah. couldn't say I'm sorry. He said he said sorry ironically in the sense of I'm sorry I tried to be your friend that kind of thing. Uh, I, I yeah. think so. All right, so I'm sorry I offended you. Yeah, I'm so sorry I, what I, I said offended your <laughs> sensibilities. Similarly, the the other note was Brahms was right to apologize for attacking Jordy when he first when she first got on the ship and was like, "You modified my designs, but." So she should not have been apologizing for reacting right. like to go, going in the hall like I'm flying like what yeah. you should be surprised you should be surprised you'd be like this is inappropriate you should all, all these kinds of things so i'm sorry i overreacted to that sex doll you had in your room with your, right. my name on it yeah <laughs> and my face <laughs> and my old hairdo <laughs> no all right, all right. Uh, okay who was your annoyance of the week? It's probably going to be, it's kind of a wild card. It was Jordy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought long and hard and went over a lot of options, but I think it was Jordy too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, along the same lines, I'm going to go with Guinan. So, 
No, I know. I, <laughs> no, I mean, as as much as as much as I want to defend him in certain aspects, Jordy certainly was off the mark in a lot of ways. So I think if you picked Guinan or Leah Brahms, your annoyance of this episode, you probably shouldn't be listening to this podcast, <laughs> and you probably shouldn't be watching Star Trek because clearly it's not for you. Yeah, but maybe you should watch it so you can learn how right. you should be. <laughs> right. <laughs> They, they did the education program from uh, the chancellor, whatever his name was. Yeah. So this may get cut if we decide to ditch the segment. But who's your crush? Leia Brahms. Yeah. I was going to choose her, but she's married. So I'm going to go with Hubble, <laughs> the transporter technician, who I don't think I picked the first time, but she had a line and that tickled me and I liked her. So her I'm going vo- with Hubble. Leia Brahms voice seemed deeper and more Kathleen Turner than even the time before. And it the fact did. that she barely cracked a smile. Maybe it took me back to 1991 because that's the kind of girl I dated then. So it is weird that you should say that. That was one of the things specifically I thought about. You know, I don't know what it is about a uh, like a woman with like a strong, deep voice. Yeah, mm-hmm. something just kind of. We so. all picked Leia as our crush in season last season for the episode, mm-hmm. and Stephen kept her for quite a while. Keith yeah. and I did not, yeah. but I picked Leah Brahms as my crush for all of season three. And I would have picked her again if she wasn't married. And it's not because, <laughs> no, it's not because, okay, so it, that's a bad joke, but seriously, like, it, it's not because she said she was married, because obviously married people can be attractive and right. you can still crush on them. But eh. I also felt like after everything that happened to her in this episode, it just felt so disrespectful to me. I don't judge you for picking her that I was just like, I can't, I can't bring myself to do it after Jordy was so awful to her in that way. My whole of death <laughs> program would beg said, to differ with you. I'm not, I, like I said, I'm not judging you for that. That's no, just how I, I personally I feel. Know. Cause I still find that she was very attractive and I don't feel judged. She, yeah, the, the actress did a fantastic job and I still love Leah Brahms as a character. Yeah. Keith, uh, I'm going to stay with Linnell for now, probably for similar reasons. Ranking the episode. Oh God. Oof. Where do we start? What, what, what is, what is four episodes from the top? Really? No, it, it's <laughs> not going to be anywhere near that. How many, if how many start four episodes from the bottom? That would be fine. Maybe four episodes from the bottom is final mission. God, I actually like this better. I, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. Quite honestly, I think I would put this dead last just because of how uncomfortable it was and how wow. awful Jordy's behavior was, even though I think there are really interesting concepts in this episode in terms of the space baby, which would have been worth yeah. exploring a lot more. And, and also there were aspects of the Jordy Leah scenes, especially like you said, at the beginning of the episode that mm-hmm. I appreciated, but I would put it dead last, honestly. What's last right now? Suddenly human. I did like that episode better than this. Wow. I, I will say that I don't feel yeah. strongly enough, I don't feel strongly enough to like fight it up really but I'm, I'm curious what, what is right above that just yeah right above that is the loss that's where Deanna loses her mental powers which was awful. <laughs> that was so bad I don't understand how that got ranked above suddenly human I feel like maybe that's I argue I far below <laughs> because <laughs> because I might rank this above the loss why would rank it below suddenly human? God, it's so hard well, to remember now, isn't it? It's like I think we like the concept of the two-dimensional space and the engineering oh, and the that, stuff. Oh, the sci-fi concepts. Yeah, I'd be okay with being less, even though there are things I like about it too. But I, I probably watch those, and then again, that's a different category: rewatchable versus how good. It is. Yeah, like I said, we did this episode even five years ago. I don't think we'd be putting it last, but I feel like it needs to be last now. That middle section sticks. All right. Bad. Yeah. Keith, how high up would you go? You said you go above Final Mission. Above that's Legacy, which was Tashi Yar's sister. Would you go higher than that? Probably not. I mean, there, there's more going on there. It's just the, the the strength of this episode had to do really with, with the interactions between Jordy and, and Leia. And it's, it's sort of like there there was some payoff there you know, because of the, the continuity aspects mm. and seeing some, some of the, as I said before, the, like the, the computer simulation playing out in certain ways, but they, they trashed it with just that kind of, he, nope. he was, he was being way too presumptuous at the, be, at the beginning in certain places and sloppily. So, and then just the non-apology and the holodeck 
And it's yeah. just so unprofessional. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And while I say we would have ranked it higher five years ago, what I should have said is we should not have, but we probably would have. Whereas we should have ranked this low from the beginning. Mm. It's a really bad episode. In fact, I would rank it as the second worst episode of next gen so far. I'm not willing to go below the clip show though. I think it's better than the clip show. <laughs> Shades of gray. Yes. In season two. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think there are some redeeming aspects of this, no doubt. I think one of the other things that's holding me back is uh, you mentioned LeVar Burton before. It's just it's yeah, it's it's hard, it's hard to find episodes where they give him that much time to do anything. And uh-huh. so Yep. I love LeVar That's Burton. Too. He deserves better than this. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to put it down here last. That seems to be where we kind of agreed on. But with the caveat that... Weeks. I'm sorry? We can revisit in a few weeks. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, we didn't mention this was written by Maurice... Teleplay by Maurice Hurley. This was the end okay. of Maurice's run. He's got one more credit after this. But remember, that was part of the behind-the-scenes stuff we discussed in a previous episode. Mm-hmm. Story by Tom Cardozoian who this is his only Star Trek credit and he only has three writing credits. So wow. that's where, and uh, directed by our old friend, Win- Winrich Colby, who directed a whole bunch. That. So next week we are watching night terrors. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. The enterprise gets trapped in a Titan's rift an energy absorbing rupture in space where all but data, Troy and Guinan experience rising hallucin- hallucinations and paranoia. I do have to say the fact that Guinan's in it and immune from it makes me slightly more hopeful Yeah, than the title did. Terrible title. We've been on our, a run of terrible titles. Both the O'Briens are back, Miles and Keiko, and in some serial rager, the navigation this episode is back as well. So right. we got some people. Until next week, though, live long. If you know what I mean. <laughs> and prosper. <process. laughs> Not the way to end it, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel sexual. No, I'm I don't. I just wow. Nothing. Not, nothing makes him feel sexually uncomfortable. So no, nah, it, it would take a lot. <laughs> <laughs>